Oh boy. Um, where are we? An office, as you can see. One belonging to the Kumakura gang. I see. A gang. I see. Hmm. This isn't nice at all. This is more like mice. Like rats. Oh, Tessa, come on now. I'm no rat. I'm a friend. Real suspicious for a friend. Don't look at me like that, Tessa. That's no good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Mama, I held up my end of the deal. You sure did. You want to hear about Renju? Mr. Okira? Sincerely apologize. Sorry for bringing you here. I it's okay. You don't have to be scared, Tessa. We're not thugs. We're just a gang. <laughs> that is contradictory. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. The old boss was really violent. I'm not. He would take a cheese grater to someone's leg if they looked at him funny. But after I took over, we went crystal clean. Crystal? Methamphetamines. No, we don't do drugs. <laughs> We don't deal with that stuff. We had to restructure the whole operation. Cut a lot of people off. Cut? Their throats. No! Not like that! <laughs> uh, introduce him. Oh yeah, I haven't introduced this old man yet. I'm 24! Mama is lying. He is at least 48. Yikes. Absolutely. Dude, let's just, let's just check this, shall we? Let's look at the files. Yeah, 48. Yikes. <laughs> Sorry for not introducing myself. My name is Moma Kumakura. I work for a prestigious advertising agency. Uh-huh. You run the Kumakura gang, right? You're like a mob boss. How did you know that? Is he stupid? Yeah, he's pretty dumb. Moma may not look it, but he's a huge ace mm -hmm. fan. Well, I mean, I don't know if I'm a huge fan. Gambling. Bet, debt, ace Worries. Uh, forget, fret, ace Now what does she say? Ace you bet! <laughs> wow, my catchphrase! Thank you! <laughs> <laughs> this, this is kind of embarrassing. <laughs> But sorry, Moma. I don't like gangsters. <gasps> you don't. I don't like gangsters either. <laughs> gangsters are awful. Oh my god. All those nasty Yakuza guys should drop dead, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> About Renju. What happened to Mr. Okiura? Yeah, he's... I heard he escaped the hospital. Mm -hmm. So did I. But I don't know anything more than that. Please tell me. See. Yeah, three things stuck out to me. I laid out the facts. Yeah. Mizuki was lured to a place where Shoko's body was found by a message to Renju's phone. Found Iris' body in the Okiura fishery cold storage warehouse. And then this. Earlier today, Renju fled with the prisoner, escaping a life sentence, an assassin named 89. Ah, man. Hold up. What were you saying about Tessa's dead body? Oh, well. Dante saw a parallel world with my dead body in it. A parallel world? Never heard of it? Oh, yeah. Of course I am. Yeah, yeah, right. Parallel worlds and all that shit. Yeah. Oh, my I don't understand it, but I suppose... No, we don't. Good, because I don't feel like explaining it. But why would Mr. Okira do that? I don't know. He could be a hostage or an accomplice. Mm. Either way, we need to find him. Yeah, facts. All right, Mama. About that Renju tip. You said on the phone that you saw Renju. Yeah, I had all my people looking for him. So, tell me where he is. Mm, I could... Oh my god. Hey, I held up my end. Mm -hmm. I brought Iris like you asked. Dante, come here. What? 
I'm gonna take him at the corner of the room. Dante, I don't quite know how to ask this, but can you ask Tessa if I can shake her hand, please? Mama, 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 buddy, pal, listen. Oh, that's it? Sure. He, uh, wants to see your boobs. <laughs> Say that? Oh, sorry. What I meant was he wants to see your boobs. What the fuck, dude? He wants to shake your hand. Oh, a handshake. <laughs> sure. <Why? laughs> Never show my boobs. Yeah, yeah. I, I just took Mama's hand gently and shook it. <laughs> oh my god. Dante, this is the happiest day of my life. It feels good to be the boss. So how about it? All right, here it goes. Renju was seen in two places. Good. First, Sunfish Pocket, mm. the maid cafe. Second, Ikume Shrine. Mm. Sunfish Pocket and Ikume Shrine. Mm. Got it, thanks. <sighs> no problem, bro, really. All right, then let's friggin' go. Why do you care? Can I have it? What? Can I have the ring? Why would I give it to you? Hey, can I have the ring? Absolutely, of course you can. Here, take it. Wait, 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 wait. no. I, I can't give you this. <laughs> you're so cheap. Come on, it's not like you're losing it. It's exactly like I'm losing it. <laughs> Aww. You guys are a good team. Like siblings. <sighs> Summarize for me. Anyway, Moma, take care of Iris for me. What? What? Wait! You're leaving me here? You'll be safe with him. <laughs> Are you serious? Look at his face! Not to mention he runs a crime syndicate. What if he sells me to the highest bidder? Tessa, I would never do that! I told you, we're clean now. We all go home on time, we follow government <laughs> regulations. See ya. Oh Wait, no! What about Shovel Forge? I told you I never promised to play with you. I but did! You promised me a date! D Dante! Is this true? You son of a bitch! <laughs> Bye, Mama! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'm gonna ignore that. Good idea. Yeah, well, bye! Dante, you're gonna look for Mr. Okiura, right? Take me with you. I'm if you do, I'll tell you about last night. Late night visitor. All right, sweetheart, you coming with me? Yeah. Dante, don't ignore me. A clean gang. I trusted you. Oh, that's just a toy. Oh, just a toy. <laughs> oh no, poor Momo. <laughs> Let's leave them alone for a while. We have two places to check. Sunfish Pocket and Ikume Shrine. I want to check Ikume Shrine. I want Shrine to go to the warehouse, first. too. Where you found my dead body. Something bothering you? No, I'm just curious. Oh, and one more thing. Can we eat somewhere? Food sounds good. I haven't eaten in a while. Oh, my chest hurts. I'm getting hard to breathe. All right, let's, let's go. Ugh, do we really have to go to the Masushi the diner? Let's just eat at Sunfish Pocket. Ugh. Let's go to... You know, let's get the diner done and over with. If Oda is there, then we'll deal with him because he's... Ugh. Don't let Oda be there. Ah, I'm so hungry. Don't let Oda T be there. Tessa? Why are you here? What did I say? I mm, I thought he was gonna be at Sunfish Pocket. Ugh. I told Dante I was hungry, so. I've always wanted to eat here. I'll have my usual Ota. E yes, right away. Ota flew into the kitchen. Iris watched him go and took a seat. 
good. Stay over there, you filthy peasant. Let me have my dinner. What's your usual? Omelette rice. Ooh. Ota's omelette rice is so good, it gives me stomach cramps. Is that a compliment? <laughs> You're embarrassing me. Shut up. Well, Ota appears to have taken it as a compliment. Um, about your resurrection. Iris, about your coming back to life. Hold it! Nope. Shut what up. What do you mean, coming back to life? Yeah, yeah, shut up. Uh... Parallel world, blah, blah, blah. Date jumped into a parallel world where I'm still alive! Mm-hmm. Tessa... died? Yep. Yep. You've been here before? Yeah, I have. Have you met Ota's mother, Mayumi? Yeah, but... I don't think she likes me. Yeah, no. That's not true! No, she doesn't. Mom is just jealous of how pretty you are, Tessa! Not very reassuring. Yeah. Whether out of jealousy or otherwise, she still doesn't like Iris. Meow. Huh? What are you doing? Oh, you don't know? It's good luck to imitate a cat in front of one of these. Really? Meow? Guess I'll have good luck. That's cute. Date, you're drooling. Oh, I'm just really hungry. Oh, I hated that. Uh-huh. Family photo, aw. Nah, no, nah, no, nah, not aw, he's gross. <laughs> Salt, pepper, a blend of red cayenne and spices, and an unidentified liquid. Mayumi's juice with mold? Uh. Kuroda Kazuaki's grilled tongue with salt. Ring ring. Who's on the phone? Who cares? Hmm. Do I have to talk to you? Ugh. Can I just not? Oh, that's Payashi Samba's Hayashi Vangole. Who? What? Hey, Date! I've got this video of girls in bikinis washing this armored car. Wanna watch? No! Absolutely not. Okay. Hey, Tessa. Could you kick that bucket there? Uh, sure. Like this? Yeah, but more. Like this? <laughs> this is awesome! I did not realize there was someone more perverted than Date. What? Why the f- Why- I mean, I thought it was gonna be a joke about her being dead and kicking the bucket, but like, what? Where's your mom? Dummy. She's in the living room. I think she's watching TV. How about you? What are you doing here? I was just doing some meditation. Lying on the ground. Mm -hmm. He means sleeping. Yeah. Date, oh. why are you with Tessa? We are on a date. Say it. <laughs> we are. Not Shovel Forge. On a date. Yeah. <laughs> oh, a date. Huh. <laughs> a date? <laughs> I'm on an investigation, and she wouldn't let me go. Date, I have some delicious fugu eggs. I promise they're not poisoned. Would you like some? Uh, let's get some of the... No, thanks. Let's get some of the iris. She'll want some. Uh, <laughs> where is Renju? You're still looking for him? Oh, yeah. Well, like I told you before, I don't know. Ugh. Good at cooking, huh, you little shit? Yeah. My dad taught me when I was little. You're making me something too, right? Sure. My treat, Date. I'm surprised you're being nice. About the parallel world. Hey, can you tell me about this parallel world idea in more detail? Oh, sure. How should I explain this? Well... Um... Oh, I know. Let's play rock, paper, scissors. Oh no. Rock, paper, scissors? Yeah. If we tie, nothing happens. We just shake hands. If I win, you have to give me something. Ooh. What if I win? I'll do anything. A anything? Don't. Mm-hmm. Anything. Oh no. Date, your heart rate is rapidly increasing. Date, you're 30. Stop. Why exactly is that? All right, let's do this. Oh no. Okay, let's go! This face! One, two, three, shoot! What should I throw out? I'll go with scissors. Shoot! 
Huh? Ah, darn it. Yay, I won! Oh, uh, no, 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 no. You see, this this looks like scissors, but it's actually paper. That doesn't make any sense. No, why did I throw out scissors? Why? You're really not taking this well. Gosh darn it, I always throw up So, paper. I get my prize! I don't have any money. I don't want any. Instead... Yeah? Can you pet my head and say, Iris is a cutie cutie? The cutest person in the whole wide world? A cutie angel? Fine. Iris is a cutie cutie. No, no, no! <laughs> Put your heart into it! <laughs> Iris is a cutie cutie, the cutest person in the whole wide world, a cutie angel. Oh god. I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like that he's 30. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, Oda's face was just like, what We the just heck? played rock, paper, scissors, right? I won and you pet me. But in a different timeline, maybe we tied. Or maybe I obeyed your orders and did something really scandalous. Rewind time, do it now! <laughs> I do not have that functionality. So those timelines are what I call a parallel world. Yeah. So you think I jumped from a world in which you were dead to this one where you're alive? That's what I think. Huh. Parallel world, huh? I can't believe it, but... Sure you can. Parallel worlds exist. Do you know about the Mandela effect? Or the Booba Kiki effect? I think I know the Mandela effect. Or the effect. 100 million balls? If I explain that, would you believe me? Sounds really interesting, Tessa. Yeah, Tessa. I know some urban legends like that. Okay, the spatial okay. temporal man, and the lost friend, and the story of two sisters. I've heard people talking about it. What's the Mandela effect again? Do you know Nelson Mandela? Well, yeah. The former president of South Africa. He helped abolish apartheid. He died in 2013, but a strange thing happened. When the news broke, people all over the world thought, didn't Mandela die in prison in 1980? That's the Mandela effect. It's when your memory and history have discrepancies. This world is full of really interesting stuff. But you know the most interesting thing of all? No, what? That humans exist at all. The universe developed in a very particular way to get here. If things were even slightly different, well, the galaxies and solar system and all of that might not have existed at all. And that means humans would never be born. And even if everything happened exactly like that, the probability of human life developing is extremely low. And yet, here we are. Dante, look at this picture. I just put a picture in her phone. There's a famous experiment regarding this picture. You show this image to people around the world and ask a question. Which one is Booba and which one is Kiki? Uh, Believe it or not, 98% of people asked have the same answer. Booba, Kiki, I don't know. The rounder one is Booba and the jagged one is Kiki. I don't like that. Isn't that weird? That's weird. In other words, everyone thinks that Booba is a certain way and Kiki is the other. It applies universally across languages and cultures. It's like something ingrained inside all humans. Hmm. There are lots of examples, like the name of this kid's book with the bears having different spellings, or people remembering that Kennedy was assassinated in a four-seat car, but in our world, he was in a six-seat car. Huh. I thought it was a four-seater, too. Or that electric mouse from that video game. You probably remember the tip of its tail being black. It wasn't? Nope. It's all yellow. And the design didn't change. Oh. Lines from movies, company logos, historical events, and little things. The Mandela Effect is everywhere. Why do you think that is? Because those memories are from parallel worlds? That would explain it, I guess. Imagine a box full of ping pong balls, labeled one to a hundred million. That's a lot of would balls. Would you be able to pick out the one? Not likely. No way. But what if there were 100 million of you? 
Well, then one of us would definitely pick up the one. Exactly! The birth of humanity is so improbable that it's basically a miracle. But if there were multiple universes... Then it wouldn't be strange that at least one of them had humans in it. Yeah. She is describing the anthropic principle. I may have underestimated her intelligence. Oh, yeah. I'm not that big brain. Like worshipping the sun and the sea. Or thinking that the mother is soft and the father is jagged. Regardless of your culture or background, you probably think this way. It's what Jung called the collective unconscious. There exists a second psychic system of a collective universal and impersonal nature, which is identical in all individuals. That's what Jung said about it. Think of it like bamboo. Bamboo stalks look like individual plants since they're separated. Yeah. But underground, they're all connected. Human psyches might be like that too. Connected at a subconscious level. Hmm, that's... The parallel world? Yeah! You saved me in the dream, right? Yeah. And dreams are all about our subconscious minds. So if you follow the roots... You get to another bamboo stalk. Hmm. Yeah, something like that. Uh, great. Now we have to talk to you about this? Ugh. There's this kid, A. He's in elementary school. Well, A had this close friend named Suzuki. One day, after school, they're walking home together. A turns around to tell Suzuki a joke, and Suzuki is laughing his butt off. And he's laughing and laughing, and he laughs so hard that his eyes fall out of their sockets. Ah, lovely. What? Well, they were hanging down out of his eye sockets. The nerves were still connected, but... Yeah. A is, of course, in shock and doesn't know what to do. Suzuki just takes his eyeballs and jams them back into his eye sockets and keeps walking uh. like nothing happened. So A asks him about it. Like, hey, are you okay? Your eyes fell out. A is really concerned for his friend, you know? Mm -hmm. But Suzuki just says, yeah, I'm fine. He doesn't say anything about it. And by now, A is really curious. But he's not getting any answers. So they just part ways and go home. The story only gets weirder from here. The next day, A goes to school, and Suzuki's not there. A is confused and asks his teacher about it. Hey, where's Suzuki today? And the teacher says, Suzuki? Who's that? There's no Suzuki in this class. Oh. A says, what are you talking about? And he goes and asks all of his classmates about Suzuki. Hmm. They all say the same thing. I don't know him. There's no Suzuki in this class. So that kid must have jumped into a parallel world without Suzuki. That's what I think. Hmm. Couldn't Suzuki just be an imaginary friend or something? No. A was really serious about remembering Suzuki. It is weird. Yeah. And there's no way you can pop your eyeballs back in like that. Yeah. Well, not necessarily. I don't like that. There's picture. such a thing as a dislocated eye. It actually isn't too hard to put your eye back in if it falls out. Ota is correct. Hmm. Dislocated eyes are easy to replace in their sockets. Hmm. As long as none of the nerves or blood vessels were damaged, there are usually no lasting negative effects either. Hmm. But that doesn't prove this Suzuki exists. Well, I guess not, but... So, there's this girl? Let's call her B. She's practicing piano in her room, and her little sister is watching TV in the same room. B asks her to turn the TV volume down so she can hear her piano playing, you know? So B goes back to practicing, playing a little bit. But her sister doesn't turn the volume down. She's not listening at all. So B turns around to scold her. She was really gonna let her sister have it. But she's gone. She's nowhere to be seen. She thinks, huh, I wonder where she went. But then, B hears her sister at the door. I'm home. B runs to the front door and sees her sister and her parents standing there. So B asks, when did you go outside? But her mom says, what are you talking about? She went shopping with me. B is really confused by all of this, of course. She asks her little sister about it and she learns that her favorite TV show was on. And before she went shopping with her mom, she was deciding whether or not she wanted to stay and watch it or not. 
So depending on her decision, a parallel world was made. Yeah. What B saw might have been from the world where her sister stayed behind. Hmm. Yeah, it's sort of like a common experience. A lot of people have experienced waking up in an uninhabited world they've never seen before. And most of them describe seeing the same person. The Spatial Temporal Man. He's supposed to be an ordinary old man wearing work clothes. The Spatial Temporal Man guides people back to the real world. He tells them, this world is not for you, or something. I'd like to meet him someday. Hmm. So, this elementary school kid, let's call him C. He goes to school and there's a bunch of things on the floor. Postcards, towels, a coffee cup, rice bowls, a sink, lots of stuff. But C realized that those were all things from his own house. How did they get to the classroom? No one knows. It's not like anyone did it on purpose or there was a thief or anything. Maybe something happened that made two parallel worlds fuse. Yeah, maybe. I know a ton of stories like this. Like being suddenly transported one year into the future, and there's a missing persons report out for you. You look down at your phone, but you realize that it's not yours. It's not the one you remember having. You look through the contacts, and it's filled with names you don't recognize. Sounds scary. Oh yeah. There's more, too. Like this town where everyone is Japanese, but they're speaking a completely different language. And all the signs and magazines and stuff have different letters. And it's not like Korea or China. It's the Japan we know, but the language is different. Hmm. That's a prime example of a parallel world. When did you two get so knowledgeable? Oh, I don't know. Tessa is always writing about this stuff on the internet. That's why I decided to research it too. That's how I learned all this stuff. Oh, oh hey. I know about conspiracies and secret societies, too. I find that stuff fascinating. If you want, we could talk about those. Maybe next time. Now, where's that omelet rice? Yeah, come on, we're starving Done. here. Done! Oda brought the dish over. He laid out an omelet rice in front of me and Iris. Iris grabbed her spoon with a huge smile bon on her Bon appetit! Face. She picked up the spoonful. No, actually, she tried to pick up a spoonful. You good? Iris? Tessa, are you okay? I'm fine. My hand slipped. Let's eat. Iris and I ate the omelet rice in near silence. There was no conversation. Just the sound of the spoon hitting the plate. The diner echoed with it, but before ah, long. Thanks for the food! Iris was totally re-energized. Her face was back to her usual easy smile. That was good. You good, Foo? Oh, to your omelet rice is seriously the best. Yeah, it was actually really good. Aw, oh, thanks. I owe it to my dad. Don't smirk he like me that. Well. Ugh. I paid for the food and stood to go. Let's get going, Iris. Thanks again. Thank you! Come back soon! <laughs>